uh, I've had some hard knocks in, uh, in classics too. Uh, one of them was grand. Uh, just not making an adjustment quick enough because there were so many there and, and it, just, it just got messed up. Uh, I've gotten smarter now. Uh, so I, 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 what I do is, and typically this time of year is I'll run, and I'll run a lot. And if, I'm in usually in pre-fish mode. I don't get to go fun fishing that much. So when I find some, I don't stop fishing. I just keep on going. I'll mark it and mark a few area, spots in the area. But I'll, I'll run a bunch of creeks as much as I can. I think a lot of us do that. As I see how like Christy does. He's one of those guys that constantly does kind of like I do. And, and a lot of, probably 25% of the guys do that. And they run a bunch of creeks and they pull into them and you shut down. And a lot of times you have to let you, you know, a few minutes, let your water temperature kick in, uh, see what the actual temperature is. And, you know, we'll idle all the way back to the back and kind of get a, 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 rating, a reading from the, say, like a third of the way in where I want to fish to the back and to see what it does, you know, if it gets warmer towards the back. Um, those creeks that are good, a lot of times you can catch them really good in, in bad conditions are the ones that, it's pretty common sense. It's the ones that may be warmer. It may be a, a flat, it may go through a pasture or uh, it gets a lot more sun when it's flowing, so when it does enter the lake, it'll be like two to three degrees, degrees warmer, and those are really good. But uh, fish are the same way. They're, they're going to be one to eat something that's in a substance, some, some, something that's going to stay in for a period of time. They're trying to build fat, and shad just don't do that. Shad will keep them healthy and, and their muscle mass up, but it's not going to build fat. So you're going to have fish that are, that are going to be searching crawdads out, which is really cool. It's, there's nothing better than a jig and a crankbait to me. Um, and so you're gonna, you're, you're gonna target those areas. And that's actually, you're kinda, this time of year, you're kinda targeting, this is, I don't, yes, I'm sure most of you guys know this, you're targeting crawdads is what you're targeting this time of year. You're not really going for, there's gonna be bass sun and there's all that stuff I told you about them getting up on a warm bank, they do that, but they're after crawdads, that's what they're hunting. So this time of year, the shad, they'll still eat shad, they eat shad you know, through spawn, but they're really, that's what they want is crawdads. So that you're, when you're, when I'm fishing this time of year, wherever I go, and it's pre-spawn or, or late winter and getting into close to pre-spawn, I'm trying to find out where the most crawdads are. And that, if you find a lot of crawdads, you're going to find that. Depending on what the water conditions are like, they will get, they can get real shallow. Uh, it, it really depends on the lake you're in. If you're on a, a you know, a tannic lake, it seems like uh, a lot of times you can catch them really shallow mats. You can catch them back in the pot, like in Alabama, we get, we, on the Coosa River, uh, it's similar to, to uh, this area, but a little different. But we catch them in midsummer when it's the hotter, the, and they're deep too. I catch them in 30 feet, really good. But there's also times and I can catch them in 30 feet and go right up to the back of a creek, or maybe it has that flow we're talking about. Right now you're looking for the cool water coming in. Uh, but I find I find that all over the country where uh, I can like catch them on the deep side, you know, 20, 30 feet of water, and then. And I do this a lot. I'll just kind of get tired of doing it or, okay, I know about this and I know this is happening. I can do this kind of, I know places I can do this. I want to see what else is going on. I'll go start running. And this is what's made me a better angler is I'll just go get an idea like that and go run uh, a whole, I'll, I'll pick a pocket on my graph or one I know of or one that kind of looks pretty to me and I'll fish the whole thing, you know, front to back just to see because I already found out what's going on out here and I want to know, I need another pattern. I need something else going on. And, and you'll find stuff like that. And a lot of times I found it is cool water. Uh, maybe, a, maybe it is that, that deeper creek that runs in the lake that gets less sun at that point. It's going to be cooler. Or it's got trees over it. That's typical in Alabama. You've got some areas, creeks that run through uh, farmland, open area, a lot of open area, and they're, they're hot. And then you have some that are through natural forests, and they tend to stay really cool, oxygenated. So those are going to be places, magnet, magnets for bass, as you have good oxygen, good water clarity usually and cooler water, that time of year fish is, you know, ideal temperature is 68 or something degrees. That's gonna be, you know, you're talking water temperatures typically in the 90s. So uh, if I was a fish, I'd like to be in a 68 degree water. It's Mike Iaconelli, this is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. You will learn things at Bash U that you will learn nowhere else. We take the mystery and the myths out of bass fishing. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. At Bass U TV, shoes are optional. And I like turtles. And that's why you want to check out Bass U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.